Pope Clement I from Wikipedia, the Free Encyclopedia, at en.wikipedia.org. Pope Clement I died 99, also known as St. Clement of Rome, is listed as Bishop of Rome from the late 2nd century, Irenaeus and Tertullian, holding office from 92 to his death in 99. He is considered to be the first apostolic father of the church. Few details are known about Clement's life. According to Tertullian, Clement was consecrated by St. Peter, and he is known to have been a leading member of the church in Rome in the late first century. Early church lists place him as the second or third bishop of Rome after St. Peter. The Liber Pontificalis presents a list that makes Pope Linus the second in the line of bishops of Rome, with Peter as first, but at the same time it states that Peter ordained two bishops, Linus and Pope Cletus, for the priestly service of the community, devoting himself instead to prayer and preaching, and that it was to Clement that he entrusted the church as a whole, appointing him as his successor. Tertullian considered Clement to be the immediate successor of Peter. In one of his works, Jerome listed Clement as, quote, the fourth bishop of Rome after Peter, close quote, not in the sense of fourth successor of Peter, but fourth in a series that included Peter, and added that, quote, most of the Latins think that Clement was second after the apostle, close quote. Clement is put after Linus and Cletus slash Anacletus, in the earliest circa 180 account, that of Irenaeus, who is followed by Eusebius of Caesarea. Clement's only genuine extant writing is his letter to the church at Corinth, 1st Clement, in response to a dispute in which certain presbyters of the Corinthian church had been deposed. He asserted the authority of the presbyters as rulers of the church on the ground that the apostles had appointed such. His letter, which is one of the oldest extant Christian documents outside of the New Testament, was read in church, along with other epistles, some of which later became part of the Christian canon. These works were the first to affirm the apostolic authority of the clergy. A second epistle, Second Clement, was attributed to Clement, although recent scholarship suggests it to be a homily by another author. In the legendary Clementine literature, Clement is the intermediary through whom the apostles teach the church. According to tradition, Clement was imprisoned under the emperor Trajan. During this time, he is recorded to have led a ministry among fellow prisoners. Therefore, he was thereafter he was executed by being tied to an anchor and thrown into the sea. Clement is recognized as a saint in many Christian churches. He is commemorated on November 23rd in the Roman Catholic Church, the Anglican Communion, and the Lutheran Church. In Eastern Orthodox Christianity, his feast is kept on November 24th or, no or November 25th. Section 1. Life. Starting in the 3rd and 4th century, tradition has identified him as the Clement that Paul mentioned in Philippians 4, chapter 4, verse 3, a fellow laborer in Christ. While in the mid-nineteenth century it was customary to identify him as a freedman of Titus Flavius Clemens, who was counsel with his cousin, the Emperor Domitian, this identification, which no ancient sources suggest, then lost support. The second-century shepherd of Hermas mentions a Clement whose office it was to communicate with other churches. Most likely, this is a reference to Clement I. The Liber Pontificalis, which documents the reigns of popes, states that Clement had known St. Peter. It also states that he wrote two letters, though the second letter, Second Clement, is no longer ascribed to him, and that he died in Greece in the third year of Emperor Trajan's reign, or 101 AD. A large congregation existed in Rome, circa 58, when Paul wrote his epistle to the Romans. Paul arrived in Rome, circa 60, per Acts. His captivity epistles, as well as Mark, Luke, Acts, and 1 Peter were written here, according to many scholars. 
Paul and Peter were said to have been martyred here. Nero persecuted Roman Christians after Rome burned in 64, and the congregation may have suffered further persecution under Domitian, 81 to 96. Clement was the first of early Rome's most notable bishops. Clement is known for his epistle to the church in Corinth, circa 96, in which he asserts the apostolic authority of the bishops and presbyters as rulers of the church. The epistles mention mentions episcopi, overseers, bishops, or presbytori, elders and presbyters, as the upper class of minister, served by the deacons, but, since it does not mention himself, it gives no indication of the title or titles used for Clement in Rome. It has been cited as the first work to establish Roman primacy, but most scholars see the epistle as more fraternal than authoritative. An Orthodox scholar, John Mayendorf, sees it as connected with the Roman Church's awareness of its priority rather than primacy among local churches. In the epistle, Clement uses the terms bishop and presbyter interchangeably for the higher order of ministers above deacons. The letters of Ignatius of Antioch, circa 35 to circa 107, indicate that several congregations were headed by individual bishops, but that Rome's congregation was not. In some congregations, particularly in Egypt, the distinction between bishops and presbyters seems to have become established only later. But by the middle of the second century, all the leading Christian centers had bishops. According to apocryphal acta, dating to the fourth century at earliest, Clement was banished from Rome to the Chersonesius during the reign of the Emperor Trajan, and was set to work in a stone quarry. Finding on his arrival that the prisoners were suffering from lack of water, he knelt down in prayer. Looking up, he saw a lamb on a hill, went to where the lamb had stood, and struck the ground with his pickaxe, releasing a gushing stream of clear water. This miracle resulted in the conversion of large numbers of the local pagans and his fellow prisoners to Christianity. As punishment, St. Clement was martyred by being tied to an anchor and thrown from a boat into the Black Sea. The legend recounts that every year a miraculous ebbing of the sea revealed a divinely built shrine containing his bones. However, the oldest sources on Clement's life, Eusebius and Jerome, note nothing of his martyrdom. The Anchorman Cave Monastery marks the supposed place of Clement's burial in the Crimea. A year or two before his own death in 869, St. Cyril brought to Rome what he believed to be relics of St. Clement, bones he found in the Crimea, buried with an anchor on dry land. They are now enshrined in the Basilica di San Clemente. Other relics of St. Clement, including his head, are claimed by the Kiev Monastery of the Caves in Ukraine. Early succession lists name Clement as the first, second, or third successor of St. Peter. However, the meaning of his inclusion in these lists has been very controversial. There were presbyter bishops as early as the first century, but there is no evidence for a monarchical episcopacy in Rome at such an early date. There is also, however, no evidence of a change occurring in ecclesiastical organization in the latter half of the second century, which would indicate that a new or newly monarchical episcopacy was establishing itself. Section 2. Writings. Section 2.1. Epistle of Clement. Clement's only existing genuine text is a letter to the Christian congregation in Corinth, often called the First Epistle of Clement, or First Clement. The history of First Clement clearly and continuously shows Clement as the author of this letter. It is considered the earliest authentic Christian document outside the New Testament. Clement, Clement writes to the troubled congregation in Corinth, where certain presbyters, or bishops, have been deposed. The class of clergy above that of deacons is designated indifferently by the two terms. Clement calls for repentance and reinstatement of those who have been deposed, in line with maintenance of order and obedience to church authority, 
since the apostles established the ministry of bishops and deacons. He mentions offering the gifts, a reference to the Eucharist, as one of the functions of the higher class of clergy. The epistle offers valuable insight into church ministry at that time and into the history of the church. It was highly regarded and was read in church at Corinth along with the scriptures, circa 170. Quote, Do we then think it to be a great and marvelous thing if the creator of the universe shall bring about the resurrection of them that have served him with holiness and the assurance of a good faith, seeing that he showeth to us, even by a bird, the magnificence of his promise? Closed quote. That's from First Clement, chapter 26, verse 1. Section 2.2, Writings Formally Attributed to Clement. Section 2.2.1, Second Epistle of Clement. The Second Epistle of Clement is a homily, or sermon, likely written in Corinth or Rome, but not by Clement. Early Christian congregations often shared homilies to be read. The homily describes Christian character and repentance. It is possible that the church from which Kemp Clement sent his epistle had included a festal homily to share in one economical post. Thus the homily became known as the Second Epistle of Clement. While Second Clement has been traditionally ascribed, ascribed to Clement, most scholars believe that Second Clement was written in the second century based on the doctrinal themes of the text and a near match between words in Second Clement and in the Greek Gospel of the Egyptians. Section 2.2.2, Epistles on Virginity. Two, quote, Epistles on Virginity, closed quote, were traditionally attributed to Clement, but now there exists almost universal consensus that Clement was not the author of those two epistles. Section 2.2.3, False Decretals. A ninth century collection of church legislation known as the False Decretals, which was once attributed to St. Isidore of Seville, is largely composed of forgeries, all of what it presents as letters of pre-Nicene popes. Beginning with Clement are forgeries, as are some of the documents that it attributes to councils, and more than 40 falsifications are found in the decretals that it gives as those of post-Nicene popes from Pope Sylvester I, 314 to 335, to Pope Gregory II, 715 to 731. The false decretals were part of a series of falsifications of past legislation by a party in the Carolingian Empire, whose principal aim was to free the church and the bishops from interference by the state and the metropolitan archbishops respectively. Clement is, all, is included among other early Christian popes as authors of the pseudo-Isidorian or false decretals, a ninth century forgery. These decrees and letters portray even the early popes as claiming absolute and universal authority. Clement is the earliest pope to whom a text is attributed. Section 2.3, Clementine Literature. St. Clement is also the hero of an early Christian romance or novel that has survived in at least two different versions, known as the Clementine Literature, where he is identified with Emperor Domitian's cousin, Titus Flavius Clemens. Clementine literature portrays Clement as the apostles' means of disseminating their teachings to the church. Reco Section 3, Recognition as a Saint. St. Clemens' name is in the Roman canon of the Mass. He is commemorated on November 23rd as a pope and martyr in the Roman Catholic Church, as well as within the Anglican Communion and the Lutheran Church the Syriac Orthodox Church, the Malankara Orthodox Syrian Church, and the Greek Orthodox Church, as well as the Syriac Catholic Church, the Syro-Malankara Catholic Church, and all Byzantine Rite Eastern Catholic Churches commemorate St. Clement of Rome, called in Syriac, quote, more Clemus, close quote, on November 24th. The Russian Orthodox Church commemorates St. Clement on November 25th. The St. Clement's Church in Moscow is renowned for its glittering Baroque interior and iconostasis, 
as well as a set of gilded 18th century railings. The parish was disbanded in 1934, and the original freestanding gate was demolished. The Lenin State Library is stored, has stored its books in the building throughout the Soviet period. It was not until 2008 that the building reverted to the Russian Orthodox Church. St. Clement of Rome is commemorated in the Synaxarium of the Coptic Orthodox Church of Alexandria on the 29th of the month of Hatur, November 25th in the Julian calendar, equivalent to December 8th in the Gregorian calendar, due to the current 13-day Julian-Gregorian calendar offset. According to the Coptic Church Synaxarium, he suffered martyrdom in AD 100 during the reign of Emperor Trajan from 98 to 117. He was martyred by tying his neck to an anchor and casting him into the sea. The record of the 29th of the Coptic month of Hatur states that this saint was born in Rome to an honorable father whose name was Faustinus, and also states that he was a member of the Roman Senate and that his father educated him and taught him Greek literature. Section 3.1 Symbolism In works of art, St. Clement can be recognized by having an anchor at his side or tied to his neck. He is most often depicted wearing papal vestments, including the pallium, and sometimes with a papal tiara, but more often with a mitre. He is also sometimes shown with symbols of his office as Pope or Bishop of Rome, such as the papal cross and the keys of heaven. In reference to his martyrdom, he often holds the palm of martyrdom. St. Clement can be seen depicted near fountain or spring, relating to the incident from his hagiography, or lying in a temple in the sea. The anchored cross or mariner's cross is also referred to as St. Clement's cross in reference to the way he was martyred. This sound file and all text in the article are licensed under the Creative Commons Attribution Share Alike 3.0 Unported License available at creativecommons.org slash licenses slash by hyphen sa slash three period zero.